Hello, I'm CEP, you're on Bespoke Unit, and in this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Aleva Master Blends 3. As per usual, we'll be conducting the cigar review using the Bespoke Unit Cigar Formula, a quantifiable review matrix that you can use at home for your own reviews. Just look in the description where you'll see a link which will take you to a guide which teaches you how to use it as well as provide you with blank PDF versions. Furthermore, these cigars have spent the last three weeks in the Bovido acrylic humidor that you can see behind me where I use 69% Bovido packs and monitor them closely with a Bovido butler. The Aleva Master Blends 3 is quite an intriguing line in the Aleva uh, range. Uh, first of all, uh, the Master Blends concept was first introduced in 2003 and it was just a limited release of 15,000 boxes of uh, special tobacco that was reserved and trialed and then experimented with to create the initial blend. In 2005, Oliva released the Master Blends 2, and then in 2006, uh, Oliva released the Master Blends 3, which seems to be continuing uh, onwards. There's no Master Blends 4 that I know of, and um, it seems to be more of a regular lineup than a very limited release or if it is a limited release, it can still be found quite easily in stock at a variety of different cigar shops. So I'm not quite sure how special this is compared to its initial uh, launch. The, uh, the Oliva Master Blends 3 is produced at the uh, Tabacalera Oliva de Nicaragua SA, also known as Tabulosa. Interestingly, at the beginning of 2020, uh, Oliva just finished their Tabulosa 1 uh, Galera, so a new factory, which is where these will probably be produced. Uh, the method for making it is the uh, classic accordion um, heteromano uh, style, and as you can see, it has a slight uh, pressed shape. I wouldn't call it box pressed because the uh, edges are still quite round, as if it was just pressed lightly on the top to give it an oval shape, and we'll talk a bit more about that later. Uh, the wrapper featured on this cigar is an American Connecticut Broadleaf. It features a uh, Nicaraguan Habano binder and the filler is a blend of Nicaraguan Lejero leaves. I'm not quite sure which regions were used for this, but it seems to be an intriguing blend nevertheless. We'll first jump into the look and feel and here I have a double Robusto that hasn't yet been smoked. So this is the uh, 7x50 Churchill and this is the uh, 5x54 double Robusto. It's also available in a Torpedo and a 5x50 Robusto. The uh, roll, as you can see, is quite nicely done given that it has a, an artisanal shape. Uh, it's quite straight, it's flat, and it has a nice firm spring. It has this distinctive uh, mottled cacao bean or cacao nib uh, colour, which gives off a nice oily sheen in the light. The uh, veins are relatively refined, although there's a little bit of coarseness, especially with the toothy wrapper. And the aromas of the foot, as I've written down here, I had a overall quite an animalistic experience. Uh, it opens with uh, some barnyard, so uh, some fresh manure, uh, musky labdanum, and some terracotta earth, basically a day out on the farm. Intriguingly though, going into the pre-light, the aromas were very different, they were much more gourmand on the dry draw. I primarily noticed tonka bean, which is a very rich flavour, that was accompanied by a hint of licorice and a touch of dark chocolate. The draw on the pre-light is excellent and is quite pleasant in flavour. With that said, let's talk about the palette. And this is a really interesting cigar. It first opens up uh, with the distinctive signature Oliva black pepper flavour and it's quite overpowering until you get about say um, half an inch in and that's when the flavours really settle and you have much more subtle and complex uh, accords and notes. The most distinctive of the first third was charred bay leaf and as I mentioned earlier a hint of black pepper on the retro hail. However what was very interesting was that as I started to progress I started to experience this sort of ground almond note that I would have really likened to marzipan, which I did not expect in a cigar like this, especially not one made with uh, a Ligero Nicaraguan filler. Once into the second third, the marzipan subsided, but there was still uh, a ground uh, almond flavour, um, but this was sort of surpassed 
by uh, some rosewood as well as iron oxide. So the rosewood, really fragrant wood, with the iron oxide, sort of rusty metallic flavor and a hint of dark chocolate as well. Making my way into the final third, licorice became the dominant note, but there was a strong resinous oud of argwood, a very balsamic character started to play around the mid uh, final third, as well as some gourmand savory coffee bean. In terms of complexity, the cigar is overall very nuanced and much more than I expected, especially when I first lit it and I had this power bomb of pepper. The mouthfeel is very creamy and oily, it leaves a wonderful coating on the tongue, and the astringence and palate stimulation are balanced and consistent throughout the whole cigar. You have nice stimulation all around the tongue and not too much focus in any specific area. In terms of life cycle, the cigar does have some uh, different transitional areas. However, there seems to be a lot more going on throughout each third. And you do have these known nuances, these peaks and troughs that do change the experience throughout each third. The finish is uh, quite long. It does last you a good 30-40 minutes. I would certainly recommend that you get an espresso after finishing the cigar, as not just as a palate cleanser, but to continue marrying those flavors. As for the residual scent in the room, it's not offensive by any means. I found it to be a lot more subtle than, for example, an Oliva Serie V or the Oliva Monticello, which has the same press shape, but I don't find it quite as pleasant as the Oliva Serie V Melania. When it comes to the burn, uh, this cigar is a little bit hit and miss. Uh, I found that although the draw stayed consistent throughout each cigar that I smoked, I found that the first ones, uh, and especially this one as well, the burn angle can be a little bit wavy and the uh, backbone of the ash can be quite flaky, it has a tendency to drop off. As you can see, there's uh, something going on here at the edges. In terms of temperature though, uh, overall the smoke is quite cool, but occasionally it does have a tendency to heat up. I believe this is because of the oval shape, as it produces a perfect seal in the mouth, it can, you can draw in a lot of tobacco and cause it to heat up very easily. Whereas a round cigar, it's not going to be such a perfect seal, and a box press cigar, which is going to be square, is going to give you, give you these little gaps, which then slows down the combustion of the cigar when you take a draw. Jumping into the overall experience, I'm very fond of the bands here. I love the peaceful landscape, the, the tropical Latin American landscape in the background. Uh, you have what, who I presume is Gilberto Oliva on the side, as well as a Oliva stamp on the other, with three in the middle to indicate the range. As for the box, it is a classic cherry wood box with hinges. Uh, it has basically a large band that spans the whole box, very similar to the plaque that you can see behind me. In terms of value for money, now this is quite intriguing as a very prestigious and a rare cigar, it's quite reasonably priced. A double Robusto, a single, should cost you around $11.40, whereas the uh, Churchill will cost you a bit more, probably $13. That being said, I've been seeing them online uh, on very, very aggressive sale prices. Uh, normally a box of 20 should cost you something like $240, but the Double Robusto, I've seen it in some places for just $85 for a single box. The price might change by the time this video comes out, but it's something definitely worth noting that you can pick these up at a steal. As for the occasion when you would smoke the cigar, this is very versatile, much like the Oliva Series V. Um, the Lever Serie V. It's got a much more decorative band, but it can still be taken to uh, special occasions and formal occasions as well as posh clubs, but it's something you could certainly enjoy at a wedding or even enjoy with a couple of friends around a barbecue. Finally, we're going to talk about the pairings. This is just a consideration that we have at the end of the cigar formula. It is not uh, scored. Um, why would it be? Uh, it's just a nice exercise to think about and what sort of context you'd like to enjoy this cigar. So first of all, I would suggest this cigar to be paired with a Carpaccio di Manzo, that's a posh way of saying a beef Carpaccio. I think the uh, mineral and uh, the, the flavors of the raw meat would go particularly well with the uh, iron oxide, for example, in the second third, as well as some of the other mineral properties of the cigar. Otherwise, you could consider dark chocolate. I wouldn't go for something that is too strong, perhaps quite subtle in flavor, uh, so that it doesn't overpower the cigar, or otherwise walnuts. Uh, I would have said almonds given that it's very close, but the walnuts are going to have much more personality and character that would go well with the cigar. 
In terms of beverages, you could consider, for example, an Anejo or rum. Uh, an aged rum would be quite pleasant. You have a lot of freedom here. You could go with either a bold Diplomatico or maybe even a subtle and floral Flor de Cana. Otherwise, you can consider Armagnac, or more precisely, a Basso Armagnac, uh, because Armagnac has greater character and is probably more playful than a Cognac, it would bring some liveliness to the experience of this cigar. And finally, as I mentioned earlier, as a palate cleanser, you could have an espresso, but you could even have an espresso, even a long black with the cigar at the same time, uh, so you can extend those gourmet and savory flavors. That's all from me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a like, leave any comments if you have any questions about the cigar, and head to bespokeinder.com to discover more men's lifestyle content. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, take care.